right, gentlemen, it's time to say keys to the race. Jill, your thoughts? Well, I am very, very nervous now, which is funny that, you know, I, when I was driving, it was not something I, uh, this time I was calm, but now I'm very, very excited. The keys to the race here, we're talking starts and restarts like Jill is saying, but watch those pit stops also and the aggression line that we spoke up, about. Line up, line up. As they come Three down the five. front straight away, the green flag is out and we are off and racing. St. Pete's finest have put away the tickets. Street racing is legal. We gotta thank Mayor Rick Baker who did the honors waving the green flag. And it looks like we came through turns one, two, and three with no incident, Jill. No problem so far, and Tony going being very aggressive there. Well, call me absolutely surprised as we see Schechter right now trying to catch up to the front pack, certainly because he's without qualified by his teammate. But I'll tell you, Jill, I am absolutely surprised. I'm very surprised. As they go through that shadow section here in downtown St. Petersburg, as we're coming up on 4 o'clock Eastern time, it is Hernan out in front, and Tony Khan in second. Here comes Elio Castroneves, and behind him is Dario Franchini. Brian Herbert, number seven, the first place car, followed by 11, his teammate, Tony Kanaan. Now, these cars are very difficult to drive now, guys, because they're full of fuel, the tires are cold, pressures are down, and for the first four or five laps, Jill, as you know, very difficult to get these cars around the racetrack without the back end coming out from underneath them. Yeah, you can see Tony Kanaan getting sideways there into the straight. He was trying to get close to Brian Hurt to, to possibly try to overtake him over there. But so far, a very clean first lap. And Brian holding his lead. Muscle the car around the course, and Carponte has done that. Here we go. On the left-hand side, that is Tony Kanaan thinking about making a run as he just showed his teammate a wheel there. Jill, just to give him an idea. But when he does that, number three, Elio Castronemis comes right inside of him. It's always on that turn. I think he's obviously very, very good going to that straight, and every time he has a quick look at it, he's, sooner or later, we might see an overtaking maneuver happening over there. Well, I don't know if he made a mistake right there or not, Jill. Brian Hurt is starting to pull away as they come through this little chicane area. Nice. Uh, that's the way it goes. When the guy accelerates out of the corner, it's very, very uh, easy for the guy in front to pull away. Riding along with Tony Kanaan. Scott, what are you seeing? Right now, watch how he's working this wheel. That can be have a situation right now where the whole thing is that you've got to really work that wheel to get through the turn and use the gears all the way up through the gearbox. Well, Jill, they've apparently listened at the driver's meeting, I won't say for the first time, but I think they took Brian Barnhart's words to, to right to their melons because they are driving clean and letting the course come to them. Absolutely sure they did, and they absolutely proved me wrong as well because I was 90% sure that something was going to happen on that first turn, but, you know, they show their professionalism and their control and self-restraint and got through it okay. But it's early. It is early, As yeah. you know, but it's early. This point is concerned, a little bit of understeer, but keeping pace with the cars in front of her, just settling in, and we've got an incident. Let's go upstairs. Oh, my, an incident right in that corner, and unfortunately, it looks like it's the three-car of Elio Castroneves, excuse me, and AJ Foyt the fourth, and Foyt is going to creep back onto the track, and I don't know if that's such a great idea to come in on that inside lane. Well, he's going to stay in the grass there. Here we go one more time. Elio Castroneves is the three Penske car. He goes to the inside, and whether or not AJ Foyt the fourth saw him coming, or if Elio pushed the issue just a little bit. Be on the Panther front between Thomas Zanka and Thomas Schecker. They've gained six positions, guys. Actually, Thomas Schecter overtook him. As you see, it's just fuel and tires all happy men. Brian, er Brian Hurd of the leader. Only change is that he requested more grip in the rear. So far, a clean stop, and Hurd gets away nicely. And guys, here's the race off pit road. Hurd and Schecter, and Schecter will get will win it. Looked like Schechter and Herta were nose to nose as they came across. It was Schechter, Herta, Franchitti. Schechter got him by about seven inches at the lines. It was Schechter, Herta, Franchitti in that order. As we go on board with Tony Kanaan, Jill, you talked about it. Not the best pit stop for him. Yeah, let's see what happens here. They plugged in the fuel. This side got some trouble uh, apparently plugging in. They're very sloppy coming out. There you go. And also he runs oh. over the, uh, the the air gun for the tires. That's going to be very costly for him. Tony Kanaan has got Scott Sharp just in front of him. How did Tony Kanaan get back to 16th, Jill? Well, bad pit stop on a yellow. That's what it does for you. But let's see this restart here with everybody on cold tires. And um, 
Oh, I'm curious again to see what's going to happen. Green flag. The green flag is out. Good start by Danica. He's, she's straight past uh, Alex Barron, running second. As Tony Kadal did not have a bad pit stop, but they made a mistake. He ran over the air gun leaving pit road and was penalized to the back of the pack. And that's the reason. Whoa. He oh, whoa. He nearly got the front of the car taken off a moment ago, but Tony Kanaan penalized all the way at the back. All right, so in turn 10, Tony Kanaan almost gets the front end taken off and give him credit for being such a great driver, knowing to back it down a little bit. He's living to fight another day. And that's the thing about overtaking in the street circuit. You either go all the way or you go all the way back out. Here is Tony, goes all the way, he's thinking, I can make it, maybe, oh, I can't, bang, you know, into the inside. Those curves are really high. He sent the car up. He was lucky not to lose his front wing or his right front suspension. I guess we'll see what the... Oh, that's interesting. Let's go into Dr. Punch. Tony Kadon, what should be the final pit stop of the day. Their outside rear tire changer went down early with a sprained knee, Steve Price. They have Don Skinner from the Weldon team now changing outside rears, trying to get it full of fuel. Tony Kadon waiting and waiting on the fuel. Final scheduled stop. All the time here. Over 15 seconds to stop here for the reigning series champion. Wow, 16 seconds for Tony Kadon. And as Dr. Punch pointed out earlier throughout the day, the fuel problems continue to haunt. The 11 car of Tony Kanaan. Well, you saw this on side by side just moments ago. Thomas Schechter putting it nose first into the tire. You see on the right side there, Thomas Schechter absolutely dejected as we go to a full course yellow. Initially, it looked like it would just been a local yellow, which would allow them to keep racing. The pits are closed, but gentlemen, I'll tell you what, Dario Franchini should thank Thomas Schechter. Go down and give him a hug after the race, or better yet, send his wife. Ashley Judd down to give him a hug. But Dario Franchini and Ryan Briscoe really benefit from this. Well, Ryan Briscoe running wide here on the, the on green the start. flag is out. And remember, Ryan Briscoe, a test driver for Toyota. He has the Formula One experience the last couple of years. Can the young rookie pull it off for target Chip Ganassi? They've got their full contingent of cars. And it is Briscoe and Manning, one and two. Dan Weldon, Tony Kanaan checking in three and four. Tony Cannon having a quick look there at Dan Wilder. And watch this straight now because he looks very close to me. Now here's the problem though. Tony Cannon is watch. probably a faster driver than Dan Weldon. And Weldon's going to let him go on through. He absolutely opened up the door for him. Didn't really try to confront him at all. We talked about that situation in Phoenix where Danny was having a bit of a problem with Dario Franchini. And watch Tony now. He's got a lot more grip than, than, than those two guys ahead of him. You can tell the way. The car just comes off the turn instead of fishtailing all the way up down the straight. And that brings a great point, Joe. And they're braking right now. He tried this, this before. Look at this. Never... Look at this. No. No. Man, they're bumping oh, around. Oh, you got to be kidding me. He puts a Firestone tattoo on the side of the number 10 oh. of Darren Manning. And Manning looks like he's going to lose another position. So Manning right now has got to be thinking, what is going on? And Dreddy Green jumps up two positions. And Dario Franchini. No, it's Kolsky Metzler, number 55. He tries to make it another one. And he causes a major incident as he tucks it in there. Scott Dixon, can he get it running again? Look at that driving ability. That's what I'm talking about. You better hold on because he's coming. If it did, then he's got a problem. Tony Kanon pitted it, lap 76, the same lap as Ryan Briscoe. Here's the corner that it happened one more time. Diving down the inside, look at that. He just keeps on the, drives right over the curbing himself. He gets back on the gas right now. That's a, pardon me, excuse me, I'm coming through, guys. Well, well Darren Manning was recovering, he loses another Here position. We go. Darren Manning say, I have none of this, so he turns in like Tony is not even there. They touch, they both survived the incident, which is amazing to me. So it comes down to this. It is a 14-lap shootout with Ryan Briscoe, the rookie, and the defending series champion, Tony Kanaan. Not an enviable spot for Ryan Briscoe. I tell you, the, the race it totally changes at this time because there's no more pit stops. You don't have to save fuel anymore. You don't have to save anything. So you're all out, all the way to the end of the race. And here comes Tony right on top of Ryan Briscoe. It's it, the pace that you drive at this time of the race is totally different than what you do at the beginning of the race. And we've got a two-car overshoot. Oh. That is Thomas Ingen, number two, and Sam Hornish Jr. It looks like Sam was trying to pull away there. It's not 
going to happen because they are linked together right now. It's a contact sport like I told you earlier. You said it was going to be a street fight. And let me bring you up to one point. After last race, there was only three guys and now going to a full course yellow. Only three guys that have completed all the laps so far this year. The only guy remaining on the racetrack right now that has done that is Tony Kanan. I think this looks good for Tony Kanan and my heartbeat is racing the second here as they come to the green flag. Remember, Tony Kanan got the black flag for that incident during the pink. As we are down to the final 10 laps, it is Ryan Briscoe, the rookie, out in front. Tony Kanan sits in second, and then Dan Well, the Dario Franchini, and Brian Herta. Darren Manning has dropped back to sixth place, but this will be very key. Maybe the one of the most important restarts of Ryan Briscoe's young career. Indeed, he's got to get that one right, and this is the key right now. He's coming to the last turn. Let's watch this. Uh -oh. He's not finished yet. Job. He's not and finished here comes yet. Tony Kanan to the inside. Not Briscoe holding him off. I'll tell you something right now, though, guys. That's not going to work. Ryan Briscoe using the whole track, blocking as he's doing, not keeping his line. He did it once going down the front stretch, a second time right there. I don't think that he's going to be able to stay on the track without a penalty. I think the officials are not going to like that at all, Scott. I think you're totally right. That was not a cool move because Tony was already on the inside, and he pushed him against the wall on the inside. Nine laps to go. Ryan Briscoe, number 33 year leader. How long can he hold on? Tony Kanan, they come together. He and says, it's Briscoe into the wall, and that time he paid the price. Tony Kanan will take over the lead, but will we stay under a local yellow? Chip Ganassi not happy there. Is it a situation that he had to do that because of his tires? Yeah, and, and yeah, what he paid the price for it. Excuse me, Joe, he paid the price for it because he ended up slowing up, and his teammate Danny Welton has gone by. But another part of me, excuse me, move. But you know something? He was angry for being blocked those two times, so he was just going to barrel in there and say, I'm coming through, buddy. Absolutely. He tried to get uh, Brian Briscoe by surprise. They touched, and, uh, and, and then Waldo took advantage of the situation. Here it is one more time. Ryan Briscoe's number 33. Right now, the green car, 7-11. Tony Kanon, new tires, can go in deeper into the turn with the braking situation. You see Ryan Briscoe being pushed off into the tire barrier right there. But as we ride along with Tony, listen, on the gas, stays late, hard on the brakes right now. Turning left, a bang, knocks the camera off for us. He's going to continue on, but in the end result, he's going to end up being passed by his teammate. Again, there you see Tony going on the inside. A nice little clip and a bang going off. You see Weldon coming through there at speed and momentum, slipping past Kanan. Get that brake pedal off and hard for him going into the turn. Seven laps to go. Dan Weldon out in front as we ride on board the second place. Tony Kanan, as they came by the last time, a black flag was waved. We're checking to find out who it was for, but it is Dan Weldon out in front. And Tony Kanan, we've just been told that it's Kosti Matsura who got the black flag. Let's watch the situation developing here with the back marker just uh, in front of Dan Weldon. If he holds him up, that could cost him the lead. And Tony's not finished yet. I mean, he's pushing hard trying to stay with Dan. Knowledge to draw from, but you know something? He's young, aggressive, only 26 years old, and uh, he sets his sights on the Indianapolis 500. He'll be tough this year. Give Gilles credit. He said that Tony Kanan would definitely be someone to reckon with today. But going back to where the whole Briscoe Kanan incident, here's where Tony Kanan really probably got a little bit perturbed at Ryan Briscoe. See, that's not Kanan, his line, is it, Gilles? Tony Kanan was all the way down the inside already, and Ryan just keep pushing him uh, to the inside. And half a lap later, really Tony says, I don't think so. Yeah, exactly. He tries to surprise him down the inside, and Ryan turns in like Tony wasn't even there. And, and Ryan had to see it. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's a silly incident, let me put it this way. <laughs> Last turn for Dan Weldon. Dan Weldon brings it down the front straightaway. Your winner at the Honda Grand Prix of St. Petersburg, Dan Weldon, picks up the victory, followed closely by his teammate, Tony Kanaan. I tell you, Tony, I think he's happy because of the team and everything, but I'm sure he's not too happy with the whole incident that they had to run off course and down the off the lead. But I think a fantastic race for all those top three guys, really. Happy birthday to that man, Andretti Green. There are your unofficial results. Weldon Kanan, Frank, Keating, and Herta.
Andretti Green goes one through four with Mara Dixon and Rice. Coming up next, Sports in our next race, the Firestone Indy Japan 300, Saturday, April 30th, noon on ESPN.